All right, so welcome back, guys. Um, we are going to finish up the rest of the study guide. So we are looking at question 15, and question 15 was going on about what a solution was, how to make a solution dilute and concentrated, saturated, and supersaturated. So first off, defining a solution. A solution is a solute that's being dissolved in a solvent. So if we want to think about something, let's put salt and put something here, and that's water. Okay, so when I dissolve the salt in the water, I make a solution. And so therefore, solution is made of solute and solvent. I kind of just repeated myself. <laughs> to make a solution dilute, okay, so I want to make it more dilute, um, I'm going to want to add more solvent. So if I have, we did this talk in class, if I had Kool-Aid and water, and I wanted to make the Kool-Aid dilute, I'm going to add double the amount of water I would normally want to add. And that would dilute it. So you're going to get this really watered down taste. If I want to make it concentrated, okay, I would take and make my Kool-Aid, except I would use half the amount of water I normally used. And by that, then I'm going to get this really super, maybe if I if it's cherry Kool-Aid, like this super cherry flavor. So it's going to be really, really cherry. It's going to be gross. Okay. So to make it concentrated, I'm going to want to add more solute. Okay. When I think of saturated and super saturated, we want to, we'll do one at a time. But saturated is going to be when I have, um, I have a solution and it's holding as much solute as it normally can at a normal temperature. Okay, so if I took and added salt to a cup, so I'm going to, I'm not going to actually add salt to this cup, but if I added salt to this cup and I stirred, then I added some more and I stirred, and I added some more and I stirred, and I kept adding salt to the point until the liquid inside the cup couldn't hold it anymore that would be considered saturated, okay? So it's holding as much as it normally can. Think of your clothes. If you got wet in the rain, it, your clothes are gonna only hold so much water before it starts dripping off of you. You would be considered saturated. To make something super saturated, something like maybe say sweet tea, we're gonna have our solution. Okay, so I have this little solution, but I'm gonna add fire to it. I don't have a lighter, but we're going to pretend that my finger doing this is fire because, of course, that works. And once I heat this up, this solution can now take more solute, okay? So for sweet tea, when I've done brewing that sweet tea, and it's, and the, or not sweet, it's not sweet yet, when I'm done brewing the tea, it's hot, that's when I'm going to add my sugar because that's going to allow more sugar to dissolve. Once the tea cools down and gets cold, it's not going to take as much sugar, okay? Solubility is the next question, number 16. So what is solubility, the things that affect it, and what do they have, what effect do they have on solids versus gases? Solubility now is an amount. That's the key word in this. So amount. So I have back to like the cup and we're adding sugar or something to it. I need to know how much I can add. So if I can add 10 grams of sugar, that's solubility. That's how it's an actual amount of solute can be dissolved in the solvent at a certain temperature. So solubility keyword being amount, 10 grams, 5 grams, 2 grams. Maybe if we just going to go to like old school, you know, two spoonfuls, whatever. If I increase my temperature, I'm going to increase the solubility of solids. So a solid being like sugar. So I had that example with sweet tea. If I heat my tea up, so I'm increasing the temperature of my tea, I can put more sugar in it. If I decrease the temperature, or if I, if I, if I increase my temperature, it actually decreases the ability to dissolve a gas. Okay, so if I'm out in a, uh, the ocean, and the ocean water is really, really warm, really, really warm, it now has less of an ability to hold oxygen in it, okay? Now, if I take the temperature of the water and I now decrease it, I drop the temperature. When I think back to my sweet tea example, if I let my tea, like I brewed it and I stick it in the fridge and I let it cold, get cold overnight, and then I add the sugar, by decreasing my temperature, I decrease my 
ability for my solids or my sugar to actually be able to dissolve. I got a whole mess of stuff going on here, so I'm erasing this. Okay. But if I think about um, my gases, okay. I actually increase their ability to be dissolved, okay? So think about my ocean. If I start moving down in the ocean, it starts the temperature starting to drop slowly. I'm actually able to get more oxygen in there. So the little fishies, okay, here's my ocean, okay? The fish aren't living up here floating around. Uh, that's a really bad fish, but... I'm just going to put a circle and that's my fish, okay? It's not living up here. Your fish are actually more down in this area, okay? Because it's getting colder, but there's more oxygen, okay? Now, pressure. We think of pressure, I want you to imagine that you're at the bottom of the ocean. If you decrease my pressure, so I'm, or not the bottom, but I want you to think about pressure as in like being in the, you know, the bottom of the water versus the top. If I have less pressure, so I'm sitting at the top of the ocean, up, up here, up in this area, it's actually going to decrease the ability to dissolve gases. But vice versa, if I increase my pressure, I'm all the way down here, I'm going to increase the ability for my gases to dissolve. Pressure is not going to have any effect on the solid, okay? All right, question 17. Comparing, comparing the homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous means it's the same throughout. So it means that top to bottom, left to right, I've got the same um, makeup. So I'm gonna actually stop for a second. And this is some Gatorade, it's mostly drunk, sorry. But if I look at this Gatorade from the top to the bottom and all the way across, this happens to be what? Uh, what flavor? This is cool blue, cool blue Gatorade. This is all uniform. It's all the same throughout, okay? Yes, it's blue, but it's still the same throughout. And I can't, I can't see individual Gatorade molecules in here. This is considered homogeneous. Heterogeneous is going to be something that's a mixture. So let me grab you a heterogeneous mixture. So this is a heterogeneous mixture. I know it's hard to see. But it's trail mix, okay? So we've got cashews and almonds and some pumpkin seeds and dried cranberries. But you can see very clearly every, you can make out every type of thing in here, okay? That is heterogeneous. It's not uniform. It's all over the place, different sizes and shapes and things like that. All right, question 18 wants to know of the four signs of a chemical reaction. And we did labs to illustrate all of this okay so the formation of a precipitate remember that this means solid okay so we did that the chemical detective where you took the two liquids and you combined it and then when we were in class you could see that it looked like little flecks or little flakes of dirt in there formation of a gas we want to think about alka-seltzer and water it starts to bubble and bubble and bubble or in class, I did that. We did the little Ziploc baggie that had the two cups, one with the vinegar and one with the baking soda, and the bag filled up. That's the formation of a gas. Color change is going to be I have two clear liquids. So I have a clear liquid plus a clear liquid, and it gave me a color. That's a color change. And the final one is temperature change. And remember, temperature change, we're thinking exothermic which is that heat is being given off. So your baggie that you had in class got hot. Endothermic is when energy is being absorbed and it's actually getting colder. And that was the other baggie that was getting colder as you touched it. Number 19 is um, what is a catalyst? So a catalyst is something that's going to be added to a reaction that helps speed it up. So when you're eating foods and things like that, your saliva, is a catalyst. Your tummy acid, your tummy enzymes are all catalysts that help speed up the breakdown of your food. Um, the next question is on acids and bases and pH scale and neutral and numbers and all that kind of stuff. So in class, I gave you guys the, the technical definition. So we know that an acid wants to give off a hydrogen and acids are going to be below seven. And these are examples of orange juice, lemonade, 
tomato juice, things like that. A base is a substance that wants to give off an OH, and they have a pH above 7. And this is going to be um, your soaps, um, ammonia is going to have that effect, um, things like that. If the pH is exactly on 7, it's considered neutral. And that's going to be things like pure water. You'd want your blood to be close to neutral. Um, we measure the pH of a substance, and we use that pH scale. So you remember in class, it was that rainbow-colored scale that we put the different substances on. To and we want to use that to look at how strong or weak an acid is or how strong or weak a base is. The further away from 7 it is, the stronger it is. The closer it gets to 7, the weaker it is. Physical and chemical changes. So physical changes, remember, they do not, don't create a new substance. Do not create a new substance. They might change its state, okay? Um, if I, you know, here's a, here's some paper, here's an envelope, and I'm going to rip the envelope in half. It's still an envelope. Okay, so I can tape this back together. I haven't, all I've done is just separate it, just ripped it apart, but it's still an envelope, okay? Chemical changes are going to form something brand new, something um, like if I, and I'm not going to light this on fire as much as I'm sure all of you want me to, but if I light this on fire, I've got ashes left, okay? Examples of words we want to key into are burning, rusting, rotting. All right, according to the law of conservation of matter or mass, matter can't be created or destroyed. All right, that's why we have to balance those equations. It completely demonstrates the law. So when I balance an equation, remember that the, the subscript can't be changed, altered, added to nothing. But I can change the coefficient. The coefficient is the big number in front. So that's the coefficient. That is the subscript, okay? Element compound mixture solution. An element is made up of one or two atoms, but they are the same. So O2 is simply an oxygen bonded to an oxygen. And then we have Fe, which would just be floating around, okay? That's an element, single thing from the periodic table. A compound is taking two or more different elements and combining them together. So we have carbon dioxide, which is carbon and oxygen, and water, which is hydrogen and oxygen. A mixture is taking two different forms of matter and not chemically combining them. So that's when I take um, sugar and water, or if I take almonds and cashews and put them together. A solution is a type of mixture. All right, the difference being is that we know that with a solution, one of its parts is going to be a liquid, okay? Number 24, you're going to make sure you go through your balancing equations, okay? Number 25 is going through and doing all of our density problems. It's very, very important that you know this triangle, okay? Or have memorized the formulas however you need to. To use the triangle, all you have to do is cover up the letter that you're solving for. So if I'm solving for volume, if I cover up my V, it's M divided by D. All right, if I'm solving for density, I would cover up my D, and it would be um, M over V, and if I'm solving for mass, cover up my M, and it's D times V. So I've gone through and I have calculated out your questions. So number one, you should have gotten 200 milliliters, Number two, you should have gotten 29.25 grams. And number three, your volume should have been four milliliters. If you have any questions, please make sure you go to your teacher and you ask the questions. And from here, if you've got specific questions, bring them into class and ask about it. I hope this helps answer any questions or concerns that you may have. Um, please study. Good luck to you all, and I will see you in class.